In this lecture, we're going to have a look at how we can dynamically allocate memory within C++. By dynamic allocation, uh, we mean using or that achieved through using the new keyword, and it's memory that gets to be stored on the, the heap as opposed to the, the stack for automatic uh, variables. So when we're talking about the heap, it's also known as the, the free store. It is a chunk of memory that is specifically designed to hold objects that uh, we create using the new keyword. And these are objects that um, normally exist for a reasonable period of time. They're not um, sort of created only to be very shortly thereafter discarded normally. Um, reason for this, uh, you use a different algorithm then, it's one that actually has to, to have a bit more uh, time and effort required to allocate the memory, because it has to go through and find a, a free space to reserve that free, uh, free space. Whenever you delete it then, it has to go in to release that, maybe to reconfigure the memory to make sure that there, there isn't too many holes um, within it. Uh, whenever we you use the new keyword uh, to allocate this memory, we get back a pointer. Uh, to the data, and is that pointer that enables us to to access and to get access to our, our newly allocated memory? You can see the the form of it here uh, and up at the top, where we're using a new a new type of data that we're allocating. The type determines the number of bytes that need to be reserved, and uh, we have a, a pointer to whatever type we have allocated as the return from it. It is simply the type and the size of the type in terms of number of bytes that gets to determine uh, how much data is, how uh, much space is reserved on the, the heap. Underneath that you can see that um, on line 1 we're allocating a new int, and line 2 we're allocating a new double. So an int generally 4 bytes, double generally 8 bytes. With the double, other than allocating it, we are also initializing it. We are giving it its starting value. Um, if you don't have sufficient space on the heap uh, to allocate this, so either we've allocated something very large, or we have uh, exhausted either the heap or the stack, they sort of collided together, uh, then you, you get an, an exception out of memory uh, error uh, being thrown. Delete keyword. This provides us with a necessary means of, of freeing up and releasing the data that we have allocated. In, in comparison to, to Java and C Sharp, um, yes, we have the new keyword there, and we use that to allocate new data, and indeed it gets to be allocated on the, the heap. And we get back, or effectively, we are signing our new data to a reference to the object. Uh, so it's, it's quite similar to C++. C++, if you get a pointer, remember a reference, we can define that as a const pointer, one that always points to um, the, the same object in memory. But in C++, we don't have uh, automatic garbage collection. And, and the next uh, talk in this uh, series, we'll, we'll have a look at what we might well, what we would need to do if we wanted to put automatic garbage collection into C++. But for standard C++, we have to remember to free up the allocated memory once we're finished with it. And that is using the delete um, keyword. And you pass in to delete a pointer to whatever data it is you want to, to free up. So you see an example here, if we allocate a memory, presumably then we use it, and where we're finished with the use of that memory, we call delete and we pass in the pointer, and that will then free up uh, whatever chunk of memory we have allocated on the, the heap. Importantly, um, you free up the memory, you still have a pointer, um, and we'll, we'll get onto that later. That, that pointer is, is a dangling pointer, and now it now points to an area of memory where nothing is allocated, so you have to be careful that a pointer isn't uh, used, or at least it's, it's sort of changed or otherwise modified. It is very important to remember that if we allocate something, we need to make sure that at some point we then delete it. If we don't do that, uh, so we, we forget to do it, or we have a, a flow of control through our code that sometimes you do a new, but you, you, you branch differently and you avoid the delete, that introduces in a memory leak. We end up allocating more memory 
then we actually end up freeing. And then potentially over time, as that memory leak accumulates, we will run out of memory and the thing will eventually crash. Uh, so it's, it's a very um, it's a very common issue within C++ programs. Um, less so, very much less so within Java and C Sharp because it's automatically managed. We're going to have a brief look at how to visualize some of these allocations, uh, just to, to give you a little bit of a framework by way in which you can think about how some of these um, statements get to be executed and laid out within memory. And this is useful if you ever find yourself in a position where you have to do more sophisticated forms of, of, of memory manipulation or forming pointers. So let's assume, and this is, this is remarkably straightforward here, that um, if you have something like int val 3, we can represent it then as, as val effectively is, is a pointer. It is the address and the name of that pointer. Um, the block then represents the block of memory and the value inside the block 3 in this case represents the, the value of the data stored within that particular chunk of, of memory. So simple representation. Given that representation, if we had a method, let's say foo, and inside foo at line 3 we execute it, we have an int star, an int pointer, ptr int, and is equal to a new int. Now in terms of how that gets to be realized, set out and created in terms of, of memory, um, you can see it over on the right hand side. The int star, the integer pointer, it is an automatic variable, so it's a local variable to this particular method. It's created whenever the, the block, which is defined for foo, is entered, and it is then deleted whenever that block ends and whenever foo returns. So because of that, the pointer resides in the stack. So this will be an area of memory uh, which will be reserved in the stack for a pointer variable. So it holds an address itself. Uh, PTR int is the, the name, if you like, the, the, if you like the, the pointer to that particular uh, pointer variable. We're saying that is equal to new int. So in this case, we will be going to our heap. We will be reserving sufficient space to store an integer, so four bytes normally. And the address of that space that uh, we've reserved in the heap, we will store that address within our pointer variable. So our, our stack um, gets to be updated uh, for the pointer variable on the stack to hold the address on the heap of the integer that we have created. And you can see it sitting out um, as, as that. So reasonably straightforward. This is a little bit more sophisticated because we have an extra layer of indirection within this. So in this case, again, we're calling our method foo. Um, two lines of code within this. And the first one in line three, we're creating an int star star called index. Now this is a pointer to an integer pointer. So it points to another pointer, and that, that's perfectly fine. You can have as many layers of indirection if you want. You could have an int star star star. You could have a, a pointer to a pointer to a, an integer. Uh, so in this case, int star star index, so it's a pointer to an integer pointer, is equal to a new integer pointer. And that makes sense. So this points to an integer pointer, so we are saying let's create a new integer pointer that it can point to. So on our heap then, we allocate a new integer pointer. So say a 32-bit system, we'll, we'll reserve four bytes of memory in which to hold that integer pointer. And the address of that integer pointer, so basically this is if you know, our pointer to an integer pointer, that's what we get to store on the, the stack. And line four, we say, well, go to whatever index points to. Now index points to an integer pointer. So go to that integer pointer and assign that to a new integer. Uh, so for line four, we create a new integer on our heap, so typically reserving four bytes, and the address of that integer we store within our integer pointer, uh, and this is the one that index points to itself. So two levels of indirection, and you get that sort of structure set out on the, the stack and the heap.
Now, if you're content with this, then that's really all that you need to have by way of visualization in terms of understanding um, how you can have pointers to pointers and to, to, to manipulate these two things. It doesn't get, generally speaking, much, much C++ code, much more complex than that. We have to, um, to make sure that this is about uh, deleting uh, the data up. Uh, so if we don't delete it, um, uh, or, or, or delete it from the, the heap, and something goes out of scope, then we have what's known as orphaned memory. It's lost memory. So our example foo, your method here, at line 3, we're getting a new integer pointer, allocating that to new int. Fair enough. And at line 4, we're doing something silly. We're just saying create as a new int. Uh, we get a pointer, but we never store that pointer, so automatically we, we've reserved a chunk of memory on the heap that we then immediately lose. Line 5, we've neglected to free up our int. It was an automatic variable created on the stack, so it's going to get removed. So at that particular sense, whenever foo finishes, we now have um, two integers allocated on our heap that are sitting there, that are still reserved, that we have no way of ever getting access to. So we've lost that memory. Um, delete it provides us the way of, of freeing things up. One thing to be careful of here is that um, whenever we delete something, as, as we should do, um, we, okay, we, we free up the memory that a pointer points to. Now that pointer is still going to point to whatever location it had previously pointed to, but now that location is going to be a basically unallocated memory. Um, that's dangerous. We need to make sure we don't use that pointer again or any other uh, referencing pointers to that period of data. So quite often it's, 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 it's good practice in C++ if you delete something then null, set to null the pointer um, that you had used. And that, that just gives you an extra safeguard uh, to, to, to basically say that this pointer has become invalidated. You need to be a little bit careful. Uh, here's a, another example you can see over on the right hand side. Uh, we've got a method called foo. It returns a pointer to an integer. So we're not returning uh, some primitive data, or, or we are returning to a pointer to the results of this particular method. Um, that, that can be fine. Not in this instance, though. So in line three, we've got int val. Now, declared as such, it val is an automatic variable. It will be declared and created on the stack. We Line four, we, we work out the value of val. And then we say, okay, let's return this. So we return the address of it. Now this is just an integer, It'd be easy just to return the integer itself. But if we had a, a large complex object or an array of stuff, we might want to return, return a pointer to that large complex object or that array. Um, but the issue here is that the data that we've created, that we're returning, it has been allocated on the stack. Um, so look at the code then underneath it. Line one, we have n star val is equal to foo. So this gives us our pointer to our data. Now, whenever we return from our call, the variables that we had allocated on the stack are now deallocated. They're, they're, they're freed up. They're, they're not being reserved anymore. And if we call another function, and that function makes use of the stack for parameters or to allocate its own automatic variables, then there's a reasonable chance it's going to overwrite whatever we had previously put on the stack because it's now unallocated data. And at line three, if I made use of my pointer, which had pointed to something on the stack, I could find out, ooh, it's now being removed, it's been changed, it's been modified. And you get into a situation then that if you are returning pointers to something, you want to make sure it's pointers to data that's stored on the, the heap. The particular is some problem with, with lines 1, 2, and 3. If I didn't have line 2 in, um, then lines 1 and then using it immediately, it'll probably work fine because even though I'm accessing unallocated data, nothing's changed the contents of that unallocated data yet. So my program might appear to work first of all. I add in some stuff, then all of a sudden it stops working. And th th these are hard, nasty bugs, potentially, uh, to find. Dynamic arrays is next up. So 
the examples we've used so far, we, we've been creating integers and integer pointers. That, that, that's a bit of an overkill. If we are using the new keyword, we generally use it because we want to create a large, and to allocate a large chunk of data. So an array or a structure or some you know, large object. Um, not, not, not primitive data. Now, if you do happen to know, for example, you're creating an array and you know the maximum size or the size of the thing that you want, you can say, just give me a new array of this particular size. It's statically bound, which means it's, it's allocated the same with any other static data. But if you don't know the size of the thing you want to allocate, uh, so it's dynamically bound, then you do have to use uh, the new keyword and you, it will be allocated on the heap. Syntax for doing this is remarkably straightforward. There's, there's little change. So you see it over in line one. We're creating a new type. Um, we're just adding on the array index. And doing this, it will go to the heap. It will reserve sufficient memory for whatever number uh, of, of that type of data that we have specified. Uh, so you can see an example down here for creating a new array of five ints. And over on the right hand side, um, how that would be set out within memory. The new gives you, the address you get back is the address of the start of the array. Reasonable enough. This is important and is also a source quite often of, 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 of some bugs in C++ programs. Now we need to, we've said this all along, if you allocate something using new, you must then free it up. And um, same applies to an array. If you allocate an array, you must free up that array. However, there is a particular syntax that you must use if you want to free up an array. And it's the one shown here, it's sort of in the middle of the screen. So delete, or square brackets, and then a pointer to that array. And that is the syntax that we use to say that, okay, this is something that points to an array. I would like you to free that complete array. The side at the bottom highlights why it's problematic, because if you omit it, if you don't include the square brackets, it's not a compilation error, it's not a syntax error. It will run perfectly fine, um, sorry, it will compile fine, it will run, but how it will be understood is that you want uh, to delete the first element in that array, and only the first element. So we'll simply delete, in this case for integers, it will delete the first integer. And the remaining integers in the array, they will still be part of reserved allocated memory on the, on the heap. So line two, very easy to put in, just typing it automatically, or oh, delete the, the array. Um, you will end up then just deleting a bit of the array and the rest of it will remain orphaned on the, on the heap. And again, that could be quite a sizable memory leak depending upon the size of the array and how frequently the thing's been allocated. So we need to remember the right syntax here. Little aside, uh, there's actually a nice thing about the duality between uh, arrays and pointers. So generally we use new if to allocate large chunks of data, for example an array. And you can see in line one here we're, we're creating a new array of 100 ints. Because arrays are effectively pointers, or the, the mechanism whereby we, we access or manipulate an array is effectively through a pointer, line two is shown here is perfectly valid. We can uh, basically use that pointer as an array name, treat it as an array, and immediately access and do your know, data three is equal to some value. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's a way of, um, of, of allocating things and then sort of avoiding a lot of the dereferencing syntax because it's automatically managed within arrays. Takeaways on this uh, new keyword, as we said, gives us a way of allocating data on the heap generally we want a sizable chunk of data. Uh, it should be data that will persist for a reasonable period of time or one that we want to share more broadly within our program. Delete gives us our way of freeing up that data and we need to make sure that we remember to, to pair uh, uh, delete with a new uh, call.